some of the ones that I come up with. My, probably my personal favorite one is, how do I know this is really from God? Right? This sounds really uncomfortable. How could it be from God? God wouldn't ask me to do something uncomfortable. So what are the, what are the three things, the three ways that I look at it when I want to decide if something that I think maybe God wants me to do or God is asking me to do, what are the three pillars that I would say to check that out? The first one is prayer, right? Talk to God. Makes sense. Ask God what He thinks about it. The second one is Scripture. Go to God's Word. See what God says about it there. See if you can find examples or things that are close to it in your life. And the third one is seek counsel. And for me, if I'm completely honest, this is the one where I can find out really quickly because the way it typically works is this. I'm thinking, I think maybe God wants me to do this. Maybe I should ask Woody about it. And then I think, I don't want to ask Woody about it because I know what Woody's going to say. <laughs> you guys ever done that before? I think maybe God wants me to do this. Maybe I should ask somebody and you think, I don't want to ask them. I know what they're going to tell me. You've already got your answer. Stop playing games. Uh, the next one that I would say is, <coughs> not right now. And when it comes to saying yes to God, what I've found is, not right now means no. So, not right now is never really a good excuse. Another one that I come up with, and I'm going to give you an example on this, guys. I, and I've talked about this before. I collect guns. I love guns. I like to figure out how to take them apart, put them back together. I like to research them. I like to go out and shoot. I can spend hours and hours and hours outside shooting, and it's very therapeutic for me. I don't know why. I just enjoy it. Um, but there was a period of time in my life for a few years where I knew that my wife would not be happy about me buying guns, so I bought them behind her back. And <clears throat> God said to me, you know, probably been about a year ago, and you guys might remember me talking about this, that I needed to tell her about that. So I did. I didn't tell her everything. <laughs> so this is another thing that we can do. God told me to do this. I'm going to scratch the surface a little bit. I didn't tell her everything. And I knew that God, once again, made it clear to me, Will, you need to go back and be a little more thorough in what I asked you to do. Um, but I didn't. So it started to put separation between me and God. And then a couple weeks ago, I went out and shot one of the rifles that I bought behind April's back that I kind of vaguely told her about. And she caught me cleaning it in the bedroom. And she came in and she said, I've never seen that before. <laughs> she said, is that a new rifle? Did you buy that behind my back? What I heard was, is that a new rifle? And I said, what my thought was at the time as I was justifying this was, no, it's not a new rifle. I bought this behind your back about a year ago. <laughs> so, I, so this is how twisted we get, guys. I'm just being real. This is how I justify these things. Um, so I told her, no, 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 I've had this for a long time, and you, you've seen this before. So now not only am I not doing what God's telling me, but now I'm lying to cover up for it. And so I lived with that for probably the last three weeks, and then I was with a guy this past week who was confessing things that he had done in his past uh, and receiving freedom from that. And as I'm sitting there, God's saying, well, really, are you still going to hold on to this? And it wasn't easy, um, but I did this week, I'm glad to say go and sit down and say, look, April, here's, here's what I've done. I need to be completely honest with you. And not only did I do this, but I lied to you about it. And I don't want to be a liar anymore because that's a deceiver and a liar is something that I've been in the past. So that's, and what this excuse is, the one that I used for this one was, I don't want to hurt other people that are involved in this. I actually had it twisted around in my mind that if I say this, April's going to be upset that I did this. It's going to hurt her feelings that I lied to her. That's not fair to her. That's a load of crap, guys. So, but this idea of it's going to affect other people. So that's not a good excuse either. And another one is I don't understand. I don't understand why God is asking me to do this. I don't understand why God is asking me to do this right now. And really... What I've learned is saying yes to God has very little to do with our understanding of why it is that he's asking us to do it. He's God, we're not. So 
if you've checked it through scripture, prayer, and counsel, and you're sure that God is asking you to do it, you don't have to understand why. You just have to say yes. Okay? So, what's at stake? First of all, what happens if we say no over a period of time? And this is not only looking at my own life, but guys that I've encountered who have come into this group or have come into my life who've been away from God for a long period of time. But if you make a habit or if you let this go, days become weeks, weeks become months, months become years. If you, if you let that cycle go, what happens is eventually our relationship with God becomes something in the past. That is, we start living on old memories. If you find yourself sitting around a table with these guys and you start talking about stories about things that God did in your life 10 years ago, you really need to ask yourself, why am I talking about stuff that's happened 10 years ago? This could be one of the reasons. At some point, you stop saying yes to God. Um, so you start living on past distant memories. Uh, another thing is your light dims. So that is uh, the light inside of you uh, starts to dim. People stop seeing things in your life that they want. So in a way, you start to lose your power to evangelize to other people through your life just because they don't see as much of God in you. God's something that was in your past, not really something that you're living in the present. And this is also, guys, this is huge because this is a primary pathway, I think, that we move out of a relationship with God and just start doing religion. God asks us to make change in our lives, changes in the relationships that are around us, and we don't do it. We can't live with the idea that we're not Christ followers. So in order to deal with that guilt, we just start doing stuff. We just start doing religion. We just start showing up to church, putting on a happy face, um, when in reality we couldn't be farther away from God. Uh, a verse that made me really think about this uh, was J in the book of James. He says, So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives, and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. Now this is it, guys. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only deceiving yourselves. So whenever we stop saying yes to God, we just move into religion, we start doing stuff to try and impress God, we're just deceiving ourselves. We're not deceiving God. God knows where we're at. God knows that we've drawn a line in the sand and we've sat down. So in reality, whenever we're not listening to God, whenever we're not saying yes to God, we're just deceiving ourselves. So what about saying yes? What I've found from saying yes to God is the process is not easy. The process is not easy. It's difficult. And the reason is because you're constantly swimming upstream. What I mean by that is you're swimming against the current of the world and you're swimming against the current of your own sinful nature. So the process of moving into this and actually saying yes to God whenever he's asking us to do difficult things is difficult. But the end result is far better. Uh, and a, a verse that I wanted to read to you about this is actually in Matthew. And we, most of us have heard this before. It says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So what's Jesus saying here? I think what Jesus is saying here is, try me on. Try me on for size. Try saying yes for a while, and you will find rest. The process may be difficult, but in the end, you will find rest. This is an area where I get this all twisted around, and I think a lot of us get this all twisted around. We start to look at when God asks